Welcome back, ladies and gents. We have Red Eye, and right. you can ask him questions. Try. Right. It's time. What do you think people are going to ask you? Uh, I don't know. Date of birth. I, I never know with these these kind of things over the years. Uh, I did the grilled thing with Thorin, which was really cool, by the way. He was really mm. good with that. He grilled me once, but not did seen he? it because I'm not important. Oh, <laughs> Dan. <laughs> he did it two years ago, though. Oh. No, he did a really good series on me. Um, I had JP McDaniel did a... Um, oh, I remember those. Uh, what were they real called? talk. They were real talk. They were fantastic. Yeah. I loved that series. You got yeah. to know like lots about lots of different people, so it was really, really cool. I remember um, he, he would say it's a non-scripted show by reading, by reading a script. Yeah, but, but, <laughs> but, no, 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 but, but he, he'd done lots of homework on you, so it was really cool. Like, yeah. I yeah. loved the one he did with Too Good. That was really Oh, yeah, I remember that. Yeah. Uh, the, the that was like long. That was like, that was like three hours. Well. Yeah, they, but they were the great like a full and feature film yeah, on Too Good. You watch them and you like, really get to understand some of the personalities in esports, so I really like those. So It was a real privilege to do. So I, I never know. I mean, I'm rarely surprised by questions, so I, if I get a surprising question, that'd be fun. All right, guys, let's do it. Let's go. All right, are we ready? Producer Reese is going to read these. All right, what we got? Who is on your dream team, and how are you doing? Um, I'm doing awful, so I don't even want to tell you. Um, we already know. We have, we ha I think I confirmed I've two snipers. Yeah, I've got two snipers. JW and Smith, that's what we confirmed yeah. earlier. Uh, who else have I got on there? I always pick Get Right out of principle, but I didn't this time, and I wish I had. He's expensive, I should imagine. Yeah, he is. He's always expensive, but I always kind of build a team around him normally. Um, no, I'm not going to tell you. See if you can find it on HLTV. <laughs> what's, your, what's your name, though? Is it, is I'm not telling you. That's part of the fun. There's how many, how many thousands of people? That's a sorry, fun pool. That sounds like just, <laughs> just horrible mind All you need to know is, right, I just... love Counter Strike, I love playing Counter Strike, but I am terrible at picking fantasy teams. Yeah. How are you doing? I don't think I'm doing so well. No, all right. Let's Every, on. Everyone on my, my team is like minus, except Shox, who's, who's not minus. He's like, yeah. Actually, Shox I, is like plus 6,500 or something. He's doing really well. Yeah, Shox would be doing really I well. I love you, Shox. All right. Uh, yeah, so yeah. bad is the answer to that question. But Very bad. I have, I Badder for, than bad. I Badder than envious. Michael Jackson's bad. That's how bad it is. So you went for, you wanted the snipers, though. Is I that, that's I'm a sucker thing. for orpers. I, I but there's only one, you know, the roles thing. I know, who, who, I know, who I takes know, the role? I know. So you have exactly. JW, you got Smith. Exactly. What have you had all of them? Yeah, I know. Who I gets could, the sniper I role? I could actually do all five. I always put JW there. It's not J so yeah. is he your captain with the, the yeah. modifier? All right. Yeah. That's good, though. He's the only guy in my team that's doing really well. Yeah. 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 We also have fantasy on in ESL as well. So when that comes along, we do Kalavitsa, I'll be. I'll be doing that one again, oh, and I'll event. be sucking at that one as well, because I'm just as bad. Nice. I like that. Just not a fantasy guy. Sorry. Even my fantasy team in football is doing so badly that Carmack is actually ahead of me still. And that guy ah. knows crap about football. He's have a Liverpool fan, after all. Have you ever lost a bet against Carmack? I've lost many bets with Carmack. What was the worst, worst <sighs> let's say, what, was the, what were the worst, worst the repercussions worst from those? Because he's I, no, he's, uh, he's you know pretty what? hardcore with his yeah, bets, he's right? Yeah, he's very hardcore. He's pretty. So let me explain this to you. I've I've lost many many bets over okay. the years, over many years, over the last ten years or something. Many many bets lost to him that have involved doing very awkward things to to people that I didn't really want to do. Things like asking ladies out and stuff like that. Very very awkward. That's against his reasonable. Not if you knew the circumstances. Trust me. Um, he would make it game related, so you know it'd be really embarrassing. Anyway, my last bet I did with him, I won. And I've not bet with him ever since. That's, a, that's good. That's and good. And he policy. had to dress up in a bumblebee costume. Nice. And go on a WCS extra, which he he, he did. He he actually did fulfil. There are pictures out there of Carmack in a bumblebee suit. There is no depth at which this man will plummet to fulfil a bet. He is at he, least yeah. an honourable man. Yeah, he is very honourable with it. Like yeah. he, he he plays hard, but he yeah. respects the rules. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. He does every time. All right. Okay. Well, my fantasy team is envious. Shocks, Happy, Kyoshima, Daps. I took Daps back. How are and you doing badly with that team? And, and Sponge. Sponge. <laughs> he's the, he's the, the cousin from Spong. Down Under of Chris J, yeah. the only what? player from Holland in Counter Strike Global brilliant. Offensive. Absolutely brilliant. Sponge. 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 I yeah. like that. The thing is, is that I'm actually a horrible person because if this becomes a thing, he's yeah. never going to think of it. that's he will end up changing his name. And he'll he'll probably just start like bombing his in results so that so that my fantasy team does really, really, really badly. I would. And then I have to sell him. I would. That I don't want to sell Sponge. Don't don't make me sell no. you Sponge. Okay, okay, what's the next question? What tips would you give to someone trying to break into casting? Oh, good question from Snick. Um We were actually discussing this a little bit earlier on. Um it's probably harder now than it ever has been 
uh, to break into casting, mainly because back when I started, we, we had a few years on radio, so we weren't exposed to massive audiences. We could make lots of mistakes, but what it also did was made us more descriptive than perhaps the, the newer commentators, if you like, because we had to describe everything. I mean, you know, it's how a lot of Counter-Strike uh, 1.6 places got their names because we had to describe where the players were within the map. So, you know, White Halls, Carpeted Walkway, that kind of stuff. It all got its name because we had to be very descriptive on radio. Um, because you guys don't have to now, that actually makes it harder for you to learn and learn adjectives and be more descriptive. Um, it also, the other thing is with our audiences weren't very big even when we did do video in 2005, 6, 7. Uh, or rarely, uh, and therefore, again, we weren't exposed to massive audiences where we made mistakes and we got away with them. Whereas nowadays, we, we have huge audiences, whether you, you know, without any disrespect, 80, 90, 100,000 people tuning into a regular Counter Strike League every week, no problem at all. And that's a lot of people to go out to if you're going to make mistakes. So it's a lot more uh, pressured for the new guys to start. So my number one tip is do it if you want to do it. In other words, Get yourself a Twitch page, get yourself streaming, get yourself a basic setup. It doesn't have to be glorious. It can be a very boring webcam with your bedroom in the background. It doesn't have to be professional at all. Just go ahead and do it, record it, and for the first few you do, don't show it live. Don't show it to anyone. Just show it to yourself. Watch it back afterwards. Look at your mannerisms, look at how you use the camera, listen to the words you use, and then reintroduce new words that you've never learned before. So learn five new adjectives that you didn't know existed by using thesaurus.com. It's very easy to use. And then do another cast. Use those five words until you've run out of them. And if you want to write it down on a piece of paper, stick it to your TFT, that's fine. Do that as well. And keep doing it until you've got 20 of them and you're comfortable using them in a variety of different situations. Um, and then once you've done three or four like that and you're thinking, actually, I, I can, you'll see massive improvement across the first few. Once you've done that, then go live and do a very low-key match. Don't pick big games between NIP and LGB or anyone. Just pick some low-key games. The guys will be thrilled to have you commentating because they won't normally get their commentary, uh, their games commentators. So they'll be happy to have you. Uh, they'll tune in. They'll give you critique, which is great because you'll listen to players rather than just flamers or idiots. And for God's sake, do not read Twitch chat. There's my top tips to start with. All right. I think that's... Until you get thicker skin, obviously. If you've got thick skin, great. Read everything. Um, but if you haven't got thick skin, and you, you can get ruined in this industry very oh, yeah, quickly. Yeah. Very, 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 very quickly. DDK has such thick skin, I can actually do that on his arm, and he wouldn't even feel it. He didn't even flinch, look. That's how thick his skin is. We don't hit people on the stream, brother. Oh, don't we? <laughs> no. Oh. <laughs> we don't do that. We don't do violence here on Face <laughs> TV. Please, please don't get the wrong idea. Okay. But I think that's quite nice because that, that, that was almost, that's essentially the step-by-step -step kind of what you would... Because uh, cause it's quite easy to say, do this or be this. But you, you kind of give a, give a guide there step-by-step. Yeah, step. I mean... You've, given, you, you've actually written material yeah, on this yeah, as well, yeah. right? So, so, if, so you want, if you want more information, uh, head over to eslgaming.com or do me a favour and search eSports Broadcasting in Google and you will find uh, there are five guides that I've written on eslgaming.com uh, and you can go and read them to your heart's content. They literally take you from, I'm a guy that would like to do commentary, how do I start, to... I'm a full-time commentator. How do I improve? Right to the very, almost to the end. I'm almost there. We've got sixth part coming out next month uh, where we'll talk about all sorts of crazy other stuff like equipment and uh, hosting and travel tips. <laughs> <laughs> travel tips from me. <laughs> Anyone that knows me, I have the worst travel in the world. It's almost known as the Red Eye Travel Coast. In fact, ESL employees don't even want to travel with me any longer. That's how bad it is. Why? I don't know. Just stuff happens to me. What do you mean? Planes what, what fall out of the sky. And Planes fall out of the sky. How do you well, still fall out of the sky? They, they kind of land, but they land on one wheel, Can one you fly engine. Or, yeah. No, I can't. I can't okay. fly. Uh, either with my arms or by a joint. I can't do it. Um, uh, delays, snow, hailstorms. Everything. Uh, Everything. You're the worst, you had the worst luck. I've had, I've had the worst luck traveling. But weirdly, in the last 12 months, it's actually been really good because we've got a guy at ESL called Graham, Messioso. Um, and he seems to have somehow contracted my travel disease. So he's wow. the one that suffers now. He's always late checking in. The plane's <laughs> broken. He's got to get another plane. It's a curse. Stays in Hong Kong for 23 hours. I don't know what it is, but he's, he seems to have inherited that it. I've been fine. Nice. I got here absolutely fine today. Well, to be fair, it's what? Two hour train? Yeah, but in the past, that would have been. I might have been late. <laughs> you might have been late. Yeah, I set off four hours ago. Yeah. You know, oh, four yeah, hours yeah. early so mm. I could get it just in case. 
No, the car would have broken down, then the taxi God, would have crashed, um, yeah, that's then the train would have been electrocuted uh, it's, it's, on it's the way. It's good that you, you're upfront about this, because yeah. I know never to travel with you. Yeah, absolutely. So Don't do good. it. It's not good. Don't that's even walk good. to me with the pub. We'll walk in different directions and we'll get there. <laughs> All right. Fine. Do you get mugged a lot no, on the way? Okay. No. Luckily, touch wood, um, no. All doesn't right. happen, luckily. That's good. Well, I, I, li I like I liked your, your kind of breakdown as, as to how to start. The only thing I can really add to it, or what would, would add to it now, is is I know when I was, when I was trying to learn stuff, um, I felt like it was really good to. I, I wanted to like learn from who, who were the best basics, and I thought at, yeah. at one point, um, and I still do actually. I think Joe Miller has amazing basics. Yeah. His like fundamental game of yeah, his casting, te his is, technical casting is, is super, really yeah. good. Yeah, and and if and I feel like um, it, when you're starting out, you kind of want to have a focus of how you want to. Because you don't, you don't want to, you, it's like the fake it till you make it sort of thing. Tr yeah. Try and say, okay, there's this this cast. I like how he does play by play. Yeah. And um, yeah, there is an element of that. Although I would say that um, I think my casting is actually a mix of everyone's that I've ever worked with. Yeah, You've been working with Tosspot. I've stolen a little right? bit of you. I've, I've taken a bit of DJ Wee, a little bit of Tosspot, a little bit of Joe Miller, a little bit of D Man. No, I've worked with a ton of really, really great people. I've been very privileged to work with probably the best in the business. And I've taken a little bit here and there. I think you just. By osmosis, almost you do just take some stuff, yeah. and it becomes part of who you are. Uh, and I think we all do that to a degree, which is why those guys, if you like, that kind of worked in ITG and, and TSN and Quad V in the later days, yeah, we've all kind of grown up together, and we've because we've all been like cross pollinization of commentary, if you like, between us. So um, that helps a lot. And to back up your point, always ask the top guys. Always go and ask the professional guys that have been doing it a long time. Yeah, that's a good point. Almost every one of them that help me will still help people to this day. I often try and help as many people as I can. Uh, Dan's offered, you know, said on Skype, hey, help me out with this. Ask, or, you ask know, for hair advice. We've had chatted before. Yeah, shirt advice. Red shirt, top button advice. We've done all of that as well. Uh, Apollo's that's, my that's, consultant yeah. for top button. I was about button. to say, Apollo, right? Yeah, he's yeah. my consultant. Yeah. That's top a good button. point, though. I mean, people, yeah, just ask, ask for help. Ask yeah, help. Ask. If you're serious you about it. Yeah. If you're serious. Um, if you're not serious about it and you haven't done a few months, at least a few months, don't bother asking the top guys because they, they, they don't have time. And they don't have time to help someone that's literally starting. You literally have to go and do it yourself and get off your backside and, and show that you want to do it. And the reason I say that is because there are, I reckon, 90% of all the commentators that start don't get past three months. So if you get past three months, then you've probably got thick skin, you've probably got some talent, you probably could do this as a role. But even then, it's still not guaranteed. Definitely. Um, you know, actually, as a, as a last point, I recently saw a DJ Week cast from 2002, mm. and I was like, "Damn, he was so good. young." Yeah, he's he really, he's really, he's good, really good. good. Yeah, really, I was horrible back in 2002, but he yeah. was really. He good was amazing, actually. Yeah, yeah. we yeah. is awesome. Yeah. Um, all right, guys, let's let's go to the next question. I'm sure there's many many qu awesome questions here. Fredo, what age do you feel is too old or too young to play at a top tier? That's oh, the, like okay. Ah, oh, that's a really good question. I have been asked this in the past, um, but I think it's changing a little bit. Um, I'd say, A, it depends on the game you play. Yeah. Because different games require different skill sets and different speed of reaction. So Counter-Strike, for instance, is a, is a very reactionary game. You need fast reactions. You need fighter pilot reactions. And most of the top players, they have them, right? Um, StarCraft needs a lot of brain power more so than perhaps Counter-Strike does, but probably doesn't need the same reactions throughout your career. I think you could, you know, you could pass off strategy and brain power for reaction time a little bit in StarCraft. Uh, League is much more difficult to work out. Dota the same, very difficult. So I would say we don't really know, is the honest answer. We don't know really what the right age to retire is. But if I look back in history, uh, Fatality was 26 the last time he won uh, a tournament. And... After that period, he was still good in Quake 4, but he wasn't great. He wasn't as great as he was in Quake 3 or any of the other games that he played before that. So I, I guess probably late, mid-20s is probably about right. But here's the other thing to remember. In the past, players have retired as early as 21 because school, children, family, commitments, real-life jobs, that kind of stuff, tax, boring stuff. So... <laughs> The reason they've had to do that is because although they were pro players, and we were pro players back in the day, they haven't had the same level of money coming in that we've got these days. They haven't got the same support from their teams that they had that they have these days. I mean, very rarely. I, I would imagine probably the top eight to ten teams in the world used to get salaries. And now I would imagine that, you know, 
actually, I know for a fact there are players getting salaries who are playing Battlefield 4. There are players getting salaries who do Infinite Crisis, uh, who do Smite. And that's not to diminish those games, but they are not popular esports in the grand scheme of things in, in the same level as Dota and Counter-Strike and League and StarCraft. So it's very interesting, actually. That I think we've now got to a point, and we will only get better, that actually professional esports players now have the ability to earn good money and not where they can think of it as a hobby pro. And then at some point they have to go back to college or earn proper money, but th they can actually... This could be a career. And that afterwards, there are options now for a career. In the past, there were no options. You, you were a pro player, and then, well, what? Who knew? You know, broadcasters, well, there weren't many. and Most of them already had broadcasters like me because we were old and we'd already finished. So that's not an option. Secondly, publishers. Well, yeah, publishers didn't give a shit about esports. So now they do. Great, fantastic. So there are options at, at publishers. And now there are more leagues than ever, more professional leagues than ever. So there's lots and lots of options. Even a coach for a team. We've seen plenty of ex-players come back as coaches now on uh, CS team. So I think there's lots more options in there that you could actually now legitimately make esports a long-term career right until the day you retire. Oh yeah, I, I agree completely there. But there's one thing that I do that I'm not so sure about. For, mm. for my personal opinion, yep. I feel like um, a game like StarCraft is actually worse than FPS for age because because even though it requires a lot of mental strength, the mechanic, the mechanics, yeah, the level the mechanics, mechanics yeah. will destroy your like your your, <laughs> yeah, your body. Is, yeah, there is, yeah, you're right about that. Um, but then we do. I mean, we have some great examples. Grubby's getting on a bit now. He's late twenties. Yep, he's yep. still playing. Well, Nesty, not, not, so, not so much. Nesty's in his thirties. White Ra's in his thirties. Uh, not performing at the very, very top, but still performing, you know, really, really well at the high end, and still doing really great stuff in esports. Mm. So I, I don't know. It, Actually, I, MVP I don't think we well. know yet, but I would imagine it, yeah. it will evolve to the point where it's similar to f professional footballers. How old was MVP? Because he's uh, uh, he, he's not that old. He's late twenties, but he, he, he's not. He actually yeah. had um uh, a surgery for his yeah, knee. Yeah. I remember MVP actually because he was so magnificent in StarCraft Two. He was mm -hmm. able to actually beat out the players who could practice like yeah. three or four times more because he, he literally just couldn't. When yeah. he was when he's playing, he's in pain. Yeah. He's constantly in pain, but he's able to just outthink them. Mm -hmm. And his mechanics were he could basically play what he had. So I guess there are always going to be outliers and exceptions, but yeah. But I but think yeah. over time, I think we'll find that they're roughly the same as professional footballers of uh, some yeah, time. but I there isn't so. really any reason why. I mean I this is a different a different reality almost but I won Euro Cup which is as good as it got back in the day uh, and I was let me think about this 2005 I was about 32 33 um, and I was still top of the game I was playing so you know, I think the professionalism back then compared to what it is now was totally different. And I don't think 2005 Red Eye could compete with 2015 players. I don't think that at all. I think they're much better yeah. players now. Um, but I don't think we really know. There's trade-offs I mean, as well. When do I there? retire? It's like experience trade-offs as well, yeah. aren't there? Because yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. You, get, you get smarter as you get older. Exactly, I definitely yeah. got smarter playing the game. Um, I probably didn't have the same aim that I had five years before, but mentally I was much better. I uh, thought about the game more, thought about the wider picture more, thought about position of players and what have you. So there is something to be said for the trade-off. Yeah, I actually, it really always reminds me of, of like Cooler or, or you know, these, these kind of, uh, these people that come along. Like yeah. Cooler, for those of you who don't know, was uh, a Russian player. And when he was 15 years old, he came along to an ESWC in 2003 and beat Zero Four, who yep. at the time was completely unstoppable. Yeah, he was. Yeah. And he just he, like so like for a fifteen-year-old to actually have the mental capacity mm. to under that pressure and stress yep. be able to perform at, at, at that level. Well, I thought it was quite it's funny as well because five, same five as six, seven years later, Cooler had the same thing happen to him with Avec and Cipher coming yeah, along yeah. and kicking yeah. his backside, and he kind of had to be the old guy of the tournament yeah, and yeah. stick up for the old guys. And, and he still competed. Really and yeah, well. no, he actually got better yeah. over time. Yeah. Like his his game got better and yeah. better. It's just the level always was continuing mm. continuing to rise. So yeah, it's a really interesting one. And in StarCraft, we have all these examples as well. Like yeah, you're talking definitely. about Mario and yeah. Flash and so on. So uh, but who knows? We don't know yet. We don't know, guys. We don't know. Next Bad question. Answer. <laughs> How did you come up with the name Red Eye? That's a good one. <laughs> uh, I like taking late flights. Next question. <laughs> <laughs> that's the that's the publicly PR approved version. Nice. Because um, he works on that. It's out there somewhere actually. If you want to find it, it's, I did an AMA on Reddit uh, a little while ago, and I was honest about where I got the name Red Eye from. It's a it's a fun story. It's worth the research. Yeah, worth it's the worth the, the research. Google. Go find it. Worth the googling. It's fun. Right. We can hear the clickety clack of a new question being Indeed. being created. Yeah. It's going to pop Sorry, out of, out of thin air right about now. Reese no? is so fast with this. Look. So fast. I can see. Fast. I can see. 
Just some sweat. Here it comes. Here it comes. Some beads here of sweat. Comes. I can feel it. Falling off his brow. Mm. What is your opinion on the oh. fall of Quake? Um, sad, really. Um, I still play a bit of Quake live every now and again. Go and kick some butt on the public servers. It's quite funny. Um, I don't play for ages, and then I just go on, and I'm just wiping everyone away with with um, with rail shots mainly because I abuse the rail. Experience. Uh, yeah. Um, so I go and play it every now and again, but competitively, um, yeah, it's really disappointing actually that, that Quake um, hasn't worked out. It, it, it's disappointing that any one v one game hasn't worked out because I think we're ripe for it right now. I think the scene is is ready for a free to play uh, first person shooter that. You know, could could bring us some one v one action. And what I miss most of all um, is CTF. I really wish we had a, a, a an FPS that had CTF in it. I think people now um, that are loving esports and enjoying Counter Strike, for instance, would absolutely adore Capture the Flag. I mean, it's yeah. effectively like football. You don't even need to know the teams, the maps, the weapons. All you need to know is it's three one. How hard is that to understand? No. It's really easy. So people used to actually. I remember. I remember back in the days. Actually, everyone always used to love watching Quake. Yeah. Quake. Quake had a much smaller player base. It was kind of like a little bit harder to get into, but it's so easy to understand. I remember Counter Strike players always. Well, not always. There was always. There was a little bit of cross pollination, yeah. wasn't there? I mean, you know, you they respected got, and enjoyed it. But yeah, you often got some of the uh, the Counter Strike players coming across to play some Quake, and some Quake guys going to play Counter Strike. But it was it was much more the other way towards Quake than it was towards CS because yeah. simplicity and what have you. Forest. Used um, Play RE3. Forrest time. has played lots of games. Let yeah, he's, he's just great. He's actually super talented at everything yeah, he plays. Yeah, he's it's amazing. Actually, he's very good at most of the games he plays as well. Um, I've got really high hopes for Unreal Tournament, the new version, um, which hopefully will be coming out this year. Uh, it's been worked on by Epic Games, some original guys from Epic Games as well that really knew the original game and Unreal Tournament 2004. Uh, so I'm kind of hopeful for that, but we'll see. I mean, it, you know, there is a space at the moment in the market for a free to play 1v1 and maybe a free to play C CTF game as well if they're really good. I think um, as a closing note for me, it's the th the, th the thing about Quake, which is so amazing, is that it's so easy to one watch it first mm. of all, and secondly, get behind the characters that are yeah, in the game. Absolutely, yeah. Because it, as you say, like the one v one thing yeah. creates such it's so much easier. And, and that was always one of the most awesome things about Quake, mm. just all the different characters, like Kula, Raph, yeah, like everyone's just yeah. so they're so yeah. different. It's amazing. Yeah. So yeah, I'm, I actually feel like. Like Riley said, it, the the scene at the moment is ripe for it. Yeah. So we just hopefully we hopefully we'll see it come along soon enough. Lots of projects going on, but we'll mm. see. Um, so what else we got, producer Reese? Do you think the CS:GO deserves its own version of the international? Uh, short answer: Yes. Uh, why not? But there is a part of me that thinks that it's irrelevant. I mean, I've seen what it happens in Dota, and I have to tell you that the saturation of tournaments in Dota is not a healthy thing. Um, I also don't think that. Let me let me put this straight out there. I think the international is a fantastic event. I really do. I love watching the international. It goes on for weeks as well. Or it seems like weeks whenever it's on. Yeah, yeah. The qualifiers and pre-games and what have you. And it's fantastic. The ramp up to the final, brilliant. Production, brilliant. Uh, personnel involved, brilliant. Really enjoy it every time I've watched it. Or the last two years I've watched it. Um, the downside, if you like, of having a tournament like that with so much money on the line, um, is that the entire scene revolves around that one tournament for that one month. So anything else that's in the firing line gets kind of shoved to the side, even mm -hmm. if it's a really good tournament. Um, the team's focus is totally on that month. And the month or two afterwards, we've seen it this year, or last year, and the year before, teams get decimated afterwards. So, and that has a knock-on effect into the next three to six months of people thinking, now how do we win the international next year? There's also the kind of it promotes a bit of greediness as well. So you have, a, you have one organisation who control three or four teams that are all going to the international winning a lot of money, which then, does that detract from it? I'm not so sure, but it could do, and it could cause collusion issues and all sorts of other things. So there's a lot of issues around the fact that the international is a thing. On its own entity, it's fabulous, and on that basis you'd go, well, yeah, sure, why couldn't we have Counter-Strike Global Offensive? But the thing is, what you've also got to understand is that we have three, at least three, possibly four majors a year now, which I quite like as standalone tournaments because it's much more like tennis where you have the grand slams all through the year. Sure, there are lots of other tournaments, lots of other great leagues, lots of other people giving away money, but there are four, three or four major tournaments every year that everyone goes, ah, oh, yeah, in three months we've got another one, in three months we've got another one, in three more months we've got another one. And that breeds consistency through the teams and it breeds consistency through the leagues as well because they all kind of know, oh, yeah, that's probably going to be there. That one's going to be a major. Yeah, we'll avoid that. We'll do our own thing for this two months. And I think it, there is a lot of saturation in Counter-Strike right now, but I think there's still room 
for other stuff. Although I think we're borderline <laughs> right now. It, it's like, mm, mm. I'm going to be a bit too careful about it. But I like where it's at this year. I don't think it needs an international to thrive or to be any bigger. Yeah, I, I, I really... I mirror, mirror your, your thoughts there completely. Because also storylines, you it's, the storylines aren't as interesting because, yeah. it's, like I said, it's that one big event. Everything yeah. else kind of pales in comparison. You're right. And it. do you know the other thing I was thinking about, just off the top of my head, is yeah. this. In esports, we have like three years in every real human year. I think that's fair to say. That's what yeah, it feels yeah, like. Yeah, like, that's true, actually. Because yeah. we have seasons that you know, feel like almost like a full football season. Well, that's great in normal sports when you have a whole year and it's dedicated to one season and, and you see players and what have you. But they're in established sports. We, we aren't that established yet. And I think having that three years in one year feeling is great. But then that also means that the way the majors are split up is perfect in a way. Mm. And I think, I think this year as well, as you kind of mentioned, it's going to be so huge. And I don't yeah. think people have fully realized. Yeah. Quite. I think I saw some posts on Reddit where someone was actually clocked on. He's like, wait a second. We're going to have a land like every single weekend, yeah. like after Katowice for like 14 weeks or something. Yeah. So there's, there's, this year yeah, is going to be there's huge. A lot of stuff. I mean, for our own part as well, yeah. ESL, we've, we've just announced our own 250,000. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, that looks ESL awesome, that venue. Alone. Atlantic Cess Arena, which is a fabulous arena. It's, yeah. it's the biggest in Germany, one of the biggest in Europe. Uh, I think it's like the second largest indoor arena. So it's a fantastic venue. Uh, we can fit 15,000 nerds in there, which is brilliant. Um, but it's ESL. I've just said, no, we're going to do a quarter of a million. doesn't matter what Valve do. We're, mm. we're going to put up a quarter of a million. That's brilliant. And that's great as well, because then you get a major within a major, if you like. It's not exactly, classed as yeah, a Valve yeah. major, but it's still a major tournament. So it's fantastic. Uh, and I think there's only more coming for CSGO over the next few years. It's a really got a very huge future put it that way definitely so what else we got reese where are we at which is your favorite weapon to use and why uh okay. right now i'm rocking the bison um <laughs> honest to god i swear to god if we do an eco round, i can't I'm believe like, you actually said I'm like, I'm like, guy, no honestly i'm like guys i'm, I'm gonna bison and they're like really uh, okay but what are you gonna do next round when we buy i'm like I'm, it's okay i'll just buy another bison so so you're a michael elliott fan because he, he's uh, the only like pro player that constantly absolutely bought bisons. i know I, honestly Anyone that watches my stream over the last few weeks, I've been playing a hell of a lot of Counter Strike, and I play with my mates at Team Plow. Uh, we're called Trenton Plow. Plow. Trenton nice. Plow. Trenton Plow. Yeah, right. we were a CGS franchise. <laughs> All right. Not really. Uh, uh, but that's the be idea. Than Enterprises. Uh, but it's a fun. Yeah, it's a fun clan. But we we have a lot of fun, and uh, you tune in. It's uh, forward slash Red on Twitch. If you want a favourite little plug there, sorry. Uh, but basically. I will rock the bison in, in, in eco rounds, and I'm destroying guys. I mean, I, I had a five man the other night. Just the bison. Did you, did you let go of mouse one? No. That's how it's done. That's how it's done. That's how it's done. Like, literally, right, mouse no. one slightly down as you as you release more bullets, and then just stay the same, and it just kills everyone. It's ridiculous. Uh, but mainly, I play AWP. So yeah, I'm an AWP, AWP fan. Yeah. What's your favorite AWP skin lots, that you have? Of well, I have the Cortisera okay, Stat Track, which okay, is, cool. is quite okay. nice. But I also have a red line, which someone gave to me, which has my name on it, which is kind of nice as well. So, um, yeah, I sort of I think I have the red line for the T side, and I have the Cortisera for mm. the CT side. That's a bit geeky, isn't it? Uh, <laughs> it's a bit OTT. Uh, 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 I, have, nice. I have a few nice skins, but not James. Not, James not switches his knife based on which side he's on. I don't know if that's oh well, I mean, I've only got one Huntsman's knife, so you know, it's when you've got multiple knives, you can do what you like. Yeah, yeah and in it, <laughs> it's like that's how it is. <laughs> James just rolls in skins. Yeah. He's got yeah, all well the James skins. Can, James can roll me some skins now. Come on, James, give us some yeah, skins. Yeah, give us some skins. Because I can't use them to bet. You're not allowed to bet. Yeah, I can't. Yeah. I'm not allowed to bet. I'm glad I stopped that. Yeah. No, that I didn't Before start. that happened. I didn't you didn't start. You, didn't start. No, you I never didn't got start. to experience... I was about to. When uh, I was like asking for clarification, and they were like, yeah, no one can bet if you're a broadcaster. Damn it! Yeah. Why did I have to ask? But the thing is, no one told me though. about that. I just I just know about it because I read Twitter and stuff. Right. Yeah. But no one has... No, I could be doing it, but and yeah. no one's communicated I mean, that I, to me. I thought, you know, it'd be wrong for me to bet on the ESL matches yeah. anyway, which is why I never did it. But then I was like, well, there's nothing wrong with me betting on face it games, I guess, but unless I'm commentating. Yeah, it's not like trading or something. But it kind of is because I feel a bit dirty because I, you know, I have chats with Nathan, MBK, and I talk to Get Ryan and Forrest, and then, and then all of a sudden I've got lots of inside information which no one in the betting area uh, yeah, of true, CSGO Lounge would that's, have access that's, that's to. Fair, that's fair. And you're kind of like, yeah, mm, I know how well they're playing, I get their feelings, I know what they've been practicing. That's inside information. In other sports true. like horse racing, that's actually okay. Oh really? Yeah, in some other betting area, it's absolutely fine. I've got a couple of mates that work in the betting industry, so oh, okay. they, were, they were talking to me but about in, in the in fact that sometimes industry. it's acceptable that you have inside okay. information. If, is, but is it publicly accessible at all? In, in, like um, if you go for the effort, extra effort, I don't know. Horse? Honestly, yeah, that'd be interesting know. to know. But possibly. All right. Well, yeah. what else? I, 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 I'm going to say, never mind. Anyway, yeah. <laughs> let's go to the next one. Have you ever considered working in voice acting in film or video games? 
Uh, yeah, done a little bit of um, video game voice work in the past. Um, nothing major, notable. Uh, we almost did a FIFA. Um, FIFA were working on voice packs back in the uh, day. I think it was 2007, I think. And I did some recordings with the That EA. sounds pretty big. Uh, yeah, it was for fun. I mean, it wasn't yeah. it was, oh, okay. once the game had come out. It wasn't oh, like, okay, uh, okay. you know, they asked would you be for the next one. Yeah, okay. Um, films, I've actually got a film to go and... Um, do a little bit of acting in uh, really? in April in Canada, which is Canada? the Puronage team. Oh, Pure okay. Onage. So they're making a movie. Right. So I've, nice. been, I've been cast as a host in the film, nice. which is kind of cool. That's actually pretty so, yeah, interesting. I'm going to go out to Canada and work with Jarrett and, uh, and the guys out there, which I'm really looking oh, forward wow. to. So that's fun. Um, and I've done voice work on all sorts of other stuff, so radio, adverts. Uh, Come down to the comic warehouse. You can get great deals right now, 10% off. That kind of stuff. Yeah, I've done those. And I've, done, and I've done lots of voice work for Sky for dubbing over oh, really? uh, video game stuff nice. before, yeah. Lots. I, I spent once spent 10 hours in a studio in Slough. <laughs> it's really <laughs> not glamorous. That it's not glamorous at all. People are like, oh, it must be really cool going to work for Sky. No, it's just the same as sitting in a cardboard room, but you've got a microphone in front of you. Uh, it's quite boring. It's quite boring stuff. So, yeah, a little bit. Slough. A little bit. Slough. Next Nothing in Slough, but, you know, <laughs> Slough. Will CSGO be able to maintain the same rate of growth throughout 2015? Yes, undoubtedly. Probably even higher. Easy question. No, that's pretty easy. Come yeah. on, Reese. Come on, man. All these Reece questions. Harder. I like how I'm blaming Reese for the questions. All right. So I guess I, I should ask you a question. Okay, what, really? what, sh what should I ask you, Red Eye? What should I ask? What would you ask yourself? That's really lazy. <laughs> I don't know. I'm the best interviewer ever. <laughs> what would you ask yourself? <laughs> if you're in I my position. I would probably would ask myself, how much money do you earn? <laughs> really? That's, I can't talk yeah. about no, that. Exactly. You see, I it's quite, quite that. pointless. Yeah. All right. Okay. So what is, what's a normal day like for Red Eye? Because you, uh, let's say uh, hey, you have a day off. You have I a day have off. Normal days. You don't have a normal Do you play Counter-Strike? You play Counter-Strike and you stream it. It sounds like yeah, a normal day for you. Yeah. Well, I mean, I don't know. Uh... Take yesterday, for example. So mm. let's talk about yesterday. So yesterday, what did I do? Uh, I got up at nine in the morning. I have a pretty normal regimen. I don't like to do this whole stay up late and then wake up late and do crazy stuff. I'm, I'm a very regimented kind of guy. So I woke up at nine. I had some breakfast. Uh, I, I'd go on Reddit. What did you have for breakfast? What is the red-eye uh, breakfast What did I, what like? I have yesterday? What golden the Grahams yesterday. Golden Grahams. Okay. I love Golden Grahams. Okay. I With was cinnamon. Oh, yeah, I, th I remember having those when I was, like, 12 years old. I still have them. <laughs> I'm still 12. Uh, men don't get past 12. Ask any woman. Um, yeah, I had Golden Grahams for breakfast. I had some toast as well. Some toast. Yeah. And the Golden Grahams. Yeah. Well, yeah. well we got <laughs> that's next level. Well, got breakfast. It's did, like did, next, did, next did, level meta. This did is you put breakfast. the Golden Grahams on the toast? No. That would be <laughs> weird meta. What sort of meta are you playing in the morning? I don't know, man. Um, you just, just for a toast with Golden Grahams. Uh, I go to Reddit. I read all the latest stuff. What goes on the toast? You can't just have toast. toast. That's so dry. I it's dry. Of, well, I had butter, you know. Oh, butter just, it. Just, okay. Yeah. Is anything else? Just, just no, butter? Just, no, just, just butter. I'm trying to be healthy that's, that's right lazy. now. And that's my only bread that's intake lazy. for the whole day. I'm not allowed to have any other bread. Okay. Uh, I then, yeah, I read Reddit. Read through uh, bits and pieces. I Favorite spent, subreddit? Huh? Favorite subreddit? Um... More recently, um, Unexpected Jihad. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I've seen that. That's hilarious. There it is a guy brilliant. that throws a paper plane yes, James showed from, this video from a recently. crowd uh, of like you know 60,000 people, and he throws this paper plane, <laughs> and it literally, for about 30 seconds, it sails down to the pitch, and it sails down, it sails down, and eventually they do a close-up just as it lands, and it hits a guy in the side of the head, one of the footballers on the field. It's, <laughs> it's like unbelievable, and then they just go crazy in the crowd, but it's been dubbed over yeah, with, yeah. with the ISIS thing. Uh, so that's that's a favourite subreddit. That was introduced to me by Robert Olin, by the way, who's uh, hilarious. He's madness. Uh, he's great. Um, so that's my favourite one at the moment. Uh, right. But I, I'm also as fun. Uh, WTF's quite popular. Uh, the Reddit, uh, StarCraft Reddit, Global Offensive Reddit, uh, Dota Reddit. Um, yeah, loads. I mean, esports wait, as well. Wait, I, have, I just remembered. Our esports. I had a question yes. that someone asked to me and right. James. Yes. I responded awkwardly. Right. James responded. James doesn't. James, I don't know. James wasn't awkward. Okay. But to me, it's awkward. anyway. Right. The question was, what is describe your your describe your perfect woman? My perfect woman. Yes. Oh, that's easy for me. Oh, okay. it, it's a complete blend of um, two women, actually. A, a perfect blend of. So two we women. could do this if we had the right if si we had scientists both women and equipment. The, if we had both women okay. in the same same room and we were able to take DNA samples, you would be able okay. to make my perfect woman. It, right. It's basically Kelly Clarkson and Kylie Minogue. All right. Let's get on this, guys. Yeah. So if you can fix that for me somewhere out there, Kickstarter. That'd be great. I hear that. Kickstarter would be great. I, I don't great. mind that. Yeah. 
Yeah, okay. Ky Kylie Minogue and Kelly Clarkson would be my, my ideal woman. All right, that's good. Yeah. That's good. Okay. I like that a lot. So, yeah, typical day. So, back to that. Uh, so, yeah, so a bit of breakfast, a bit of Reddit, a bit of catching up on eSports news. Read all my emails. I like to have zero email box. I'm, I'm a fastidious email e box thing. I don't like any emails in there. I'm going to make your so life more difficult then. <laughs> yeah, I, mean, I know his email Spare address. Tomorrow. Uh, I like to keep them all clear. And if I, they're not clear, then I have a task list of ones I have to deal with first thing. I, I try and get them all out of the way in the morning. Um, I'll often log on to Skype to make sure there's no messages, talk to any guys back in Cologne. Um, and then, what did I do yesterday? Oh, I went to the gym yesterday. So oh, wow. Gym is, that new, is that a new thing? Uh, last couple of months. I gave up smoking at the beginning of January, so nice. it's kind of... Nice. I saw your, 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 your vaporizer yeah, thing. Yeah, I did vapors, so it's, nice. it's a lot healthier. Yeah. Uh, so I did gym for an hour yesterday, uh, and I'm really sore up here at the moment, and I can't really work out why. But I think but that's something to do with what I'm pushing. Yeah. Uh, which isn't much, by the way. It's 60 kilos, which is not really all that much. I think Apollo's doing 100 at the moment, which is ridiculous. The guy's so fit ways. right now. He's so pumped. He really is. Um, so, yeah, did an hour at the gym, came home, had a shower. I had a shower before I went to the gym. And then I realized I was going to the gym, and I was like, God damn it. <laughs> and I came home and I had another shower, so I was really miffed. Um, God damn. First world problems. Yeah. 12 o'clock, I think I got back. Checked in with... Joe and Kenny get online. We were talking Katowice stuff. There's various little emails. Katowice. Katowice. Uh, little bits and pieces that are going on through the day. Um, I also talked to... There was, a, there was a lady that asked me for some advice. I think she was writing a paper at school or something. She wanted a bit of esports stuff, so I did that. Uh, I spent an hour having lunch. Which I had pasta. Yesterday, I love the detail on this. This is, I, this I, is brilliant. I'm just trying to memorize my whole <laughs> day like, yesterday. Like, oh, no, I had pasta today. Yeah, I had pasta today. That was today before I came up here. Um, I can't remember what I had yesterday actually. Don't know. I can't remember. Boring stuff. All and right. then, and then in the afternoon, I started watching demos. So I spent right. three, four hours watching demos for today. Nice. Just going through preparation. This, uh, this, preparation. Go, this goes back to that that Absolutely. other thing about yeah. If you want to be a caster, uh, and then I, I produced a stat sheet just on the last few games that mm. all of the teams have played and on all the different maps. But I screwed up my LGB stuff because I actually did Inferno and Mirage, and they didn't play either tonight. <laughs> they ended up playing cash on both games, and I was. This is your first idiot. time. This is your first radio. Uh, it's not radio. Not probably. really. It's not really my first time. Uh, so I did that, and then I had some dinner, and then I went live on the stream at eight o'clock and finished at about one o'clock. I think we played some sub games. All right, play some Counter Strike. So what's your, what's your Twitch night. stream to close this off? To direct uh, forward, direct to twi people's Twitch.tv forward slash Red Eye. Oh, that's simple. Very easy. That's simple enough. Yeah. And thank All you right. for having me today. It's been a real fun. Oh yeah, we have to lots get you back of, more. You're of, so lots, you're close by. Lots two of hours. fun for Counter Strike. Honestly, I, I I didn't think it could be this much fun sitting next to Dan. What? Oh Dan, Dan, Dan! Don't don't bat on me now. I was joking, obviously. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching the show. We do have the North American stream later. So if, you're, if you love your Counter-Strike so much that you, you decide that Counter-Strike is more important than sleep, well, you're, you're in the right place. Because in a few hours, we'll be going live with North American stream for Face of League. So that's, that's great. That's brilliant. We have 450k followers. We will be giving away stuff. We've got knives. We've got op -asimals. Well, a knife. Don't want to put plural there. Don't want to get your hopes up. <laughs> but that is the end of the show. So thanks so much, Red Eye. Uh, we'll get you back much. soon. Uh, it's only really two hours. It. What can go wrong in two hours of travel? Absolutely. I could be electrocuted. The train could come off the rails. I could uh -oh. fall outside the cab. I could literally crash my car. I've done that a couple of times. I could probably not get here in the taxi because that will break down. What could possibly go wrong? On that grim note, we are going to close the show off and then we'll invite Red Eye back. If you can make it back here, <laughs> he will come back in the future. But thank you. We'll see you later.